Here. Mayor Long? Here. Thank you, Siana. We have a presentation and some employee introductions. And I think that we'll go ahead and do the employee introductions before our presentation in case they want to ditch us, because you know, they might not want to sit through all of our st fun stuff. Um, so Bob Nat, are you the person introducing our new people? Yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor uh, and Council Members. I'm here to introduce you uh, two new hires and one promotion uh, amongst the streets department. So uh, I'd like to introduce uh, like Brett Rayler. He's our new lead uh, street maintenance worker. Brett is a, a Humble County resident, grew up here in Fortuna. Uh, amongst uh, other things, uh, he's gained an experience in, in the trades just locally and stuff here. Uh, in 2017, in January, uh, Brett started as a part-time Streets One position, and since then he has worked through his ranks up through the uh, to where the position he is now. So i uh, just like to introduce you to uh, Brett Wheeler. Uh, now, <laughs> so. Hi, everybody. Uh, I know a few of you. Uh, it's, uh, I'm grateful for the uh, the trust in this uh, promotion, and uh, I will try to do some good work. Uh, thanks. Thank you, Brett, and congratulations on your promotion. Thank you, Brett. Uh, Next, I would like to introduce to uh, one of our two new hires, uh, Billy Fountain. Uh, he was also raised here in Fortuna. Uh, he graduated Fortuna High as as well as well as a uh, as our ever everyone here on our on our crew apparently. But uh, Billy was uh, has interest in martial arts, and he likes to further advance in his practice. So one of his uh, high, one of his uh, high values is in being involved with his friends and family with his on his off time. Interesting fact is that Billy was the youngest member of the accordions back of some time ago. So I don't know if many of you remember the accordions, but it was an interesting uh, group of uh, gentlemen. So I want to welcome Billy Fountain. Thank you, Bob. Uh, I uh, am just truly grateful to be um, working for the community that I care so much about. And I um, just really, really appreciate this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. Welcome, Billy. And for the last, uh, our new hire that is uh, Michael Hall, uh, also a Fortuna resident graduated Fortuna High. Um, he moved out of the area for uh, for a period of time to pursue, pursue work in the, in the Bay Area after high school. And Michael recently came back to the area uh, to be close with family and, and friends. So uh, Michael's interest is hiking and traveling. Uh, one of his goals uh, is to travel to visit family in Sicily. So uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Michael Hall. Michael, would you like to say anything? Oh, oh. oh you had it. You're still muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to work with the city of Fortuna, uh, the street maintenance number two. That's all. All right. Well, welcome aboard. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have a presentation, which is an update on sustainable groundwater management plan for the Ill River Basin, um, presented by Jack Rice for the County of Humboldt. Good evening, Mayor Long, members of the City Council. Summer Doherty with the County of Humboldt is also here and she will start us off. 
Good evening, uh, Mayor Long and Council members. Thanks for having us tonight. My name is Summer Dougherty. I'm with the County of Humboldt, and um, we have been working on the Eel River Groundwater Sustainability Management Plan. And this has, uh, we last spoke with you, I believe back in June and gave you a brief update on the process and the project. And so your, you, your um, council and your staff have been supportive in this project and assisting with uh, data collection, um, well installation and providing water use information. So just a, a real quick shout out to uh, Brendan Bird, Merritt Perry and Chris, uh, Christopher Christensen for your assistance in this and uh, participation. So we really appreciate your staff for helping with this project. But we are, um, we're in this process because the Department of Water Resources, uh, the California establishes, established the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act in 2015 and ranked the Eel River Groundwater Valley Basin as a medium priority basin, which means we then need to establish or develop a groundwater sustainability plan so we spent the last couple, uh, last year and a half, two years working on that in partnership with um, our consultants, including Jack Rice, with cities, with uh, community service districts and water districts, as well as stakeholders within the basin. And so here tonight, we're gonna give you kind of an update on where we're at on the process and where we're headed in the next uh, few months. And I'm gonna turn that over to Jack. Thank you. So. The Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, groundwater, and this groundwater sustainability plan, they're all really complicated. We're just going to touch really mostly on the process, let you know where we are, and the rough contours of the plan. It's all available on the county's website. Currently, the groundwater sustainability plan is available for public review until December 24th. So if there's any uh, follow-up questions or if people want to look at the plan, it's on the website. This is just a very quick overview of what's going on. So the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act says that you have to ensure that groundwater is being sustainably managed. To do that, you basically have to demonstrate that there are not any undesirable results. And essentially undesirable results are things that are caused from overutilization of groundwater, you're pumping more than is coming in. So you have to look at groundwater levels, groundwater storage, seawater intrusion, water quality issues, any subsidence that may be occurring, interconnected surface water. So the keys here in the Eel River Valley Basin are really the interconnected surface water, groundwater levels, and seawater intrusion. That's where the focus has been. But all of those have to be addressed. The Generally, they... The way you comply is you form this agency, that agency develops a plan. Once adopted, the agency has to implement the plan. Here, Humboldt County has formed the Groundwater Sustainability Agency. The plan is out for review, and then the plan will be implemented. There is a state review, so after the plan submitted, the Department of Water Resources has a couple years, actually, to review the plan and let the groundwater sustainability agency know, is it adequate? Has it met the requirements? So really quickly, the, the way the plan works is there's kind of three key parts. There's really four, but the fourth part is the supporting information. So the first part just talks about the basic information about the groundwater sustainability agency in the basin, kind of what's the political landscape, if you will, and some of the physical landscape as well. The second part is the basin setting. So this is how does water work in our basin and what are the conditions? What condition is groundwater in? You use a lot of modeling to make sure you can understand it because you can't really measure obviously everything going on with groundwater. The county has done a lot of work developing models and developing the technical information, monitoring in order to support development of the groundwater sustainability plan. And the third section is the sustainable management part. This is, okay, how do we know whether there is a problem that needs to be addressed or how do we know when a problem might be, occur if there isn't one now? In the groundwater sustainability plan, they looked at all six of those factors and determined that there is no issues at this point. And as a matter of fact, based on the data and the modeling, the groundwater use could, will actually would actually have to increase before you would end up with a concern. Now, there, there obviously are concerns about the low summer flows, and there's different issues that have been looked at very hard 
And the fact is there's just a lot of water in this area, even in dry years. And so the effects on those flows are not as, uh, they're not even measurable really at this point. And so that's what um, the data indicated. Based on that, there aren't issues that need to be addressed. I would say this is the draft. This is the first draft. There will be people commenting on that. But the goal of the groundwater sustainability plan, looking at all the data, putting the pieces together is to make sure they maintain high quality and abundant groundwater resources to support existing and long-term community needs without causing any of those undesirable results. So with, with that, that's just the how the pieces fit together and uh, the general conclusion, we can, uh, we'll talk about the next steps and then if there's any questions, we'd be happy to answer that. So the next steps, the, the public review period closes December 24th. Then on those comments will be integrated. They're working on additional information and drafting, redrafting the groundwater sustainability plan now. On January 4th, that plan will be uh, presented to the Humboldt County Board of Supervisors, which is actually acting as the groundwater sustainability agency. So they'll have that presented on January 24th. The goal is for the county to adopt the groundwater sustainability plan January 25th. And then it must be submitted to the Department of Water Resources, the state, by January 31st. After that, there'll be a right starting right away, April 1st, there'll be a report due to the Department of Water Resources. What happened in 2021? So that comes on, the implementation starts right away. Like I said, there'll be a couple of years that DWR has to review it. There'll actually be, once it's posted online, there'll be an opportunity for people to comment on the GSP to the Department of Water Resources and provide uh, input there. So we're available for any questions. It, it, this is really complicated. It's kind of too hard to dig very much below just an update. So that's what we did. Uh, are there any questions or? Mike Losey has a question. I, I do have a, a real quick question. Um, one of the undesirable results that you mentioned, um, Jack, was seawater intrusion. And um, maybe maybe you can answer this, or maybe Summer can. Um, I'm I'm guessing that there would be some um, some give with regard to the natural wave and inundation that you find coming in like for the mouth of the Eel River. So how far uh, above the mouth, for instance, would those kinds of measurements be taken? I'm, I'm just curious of that. Oh, that's a, that's a great question. And uh, what the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act requires is that there be an isocontour, which is just a rough line on a map indicating what the chloride concentrations are. So what Humboldt County did is they said, okay, where, when we look at monitoring wells and we measure the chloride concentrations, basically to see where the natural water, naturally where the salt water co is coming into, do they change? That's what you're looking at. Does that isocontour line, does that move inland? And what they found is since 19, uh, I think, well, Summer will, can fill you in on the exact date, I've forgotten, but it's been stable for many, many decades. Summer, do you want to add anything to that? Sure. So the initial study on the saltwater intrusion in groundwater was conducted in 1975 by the USGS. And that's the US, um, United States Geological Service. And they found that, uh, and I'm, we have maps that are within appendices of the plan that can show that. But based on the, the water samples that were pulled in private wells and tested for chlorides or salts, and compared to the testing that we've been doing in those very same wells, in addition to uh, several more wells, just to fine tune that line, we found that that's, it's not that line, the seawater is not shifting inland, um, and actually in any measurable amount. So uh, we have several monitoring wells that have been installed and actually two of them within the city limits, but those were not looking at chlorides within your city limits. And, um, and then still some private monitoring wells that we have access to to monitor in the future. So that's something that's part of the monitoring plan we'll be looking at each year uh, and typically twice a year 
to test water, uh, water samples for different constituents plus fluorides and then also groundwater levels to keep an eye on those. Okay, thank you. That's um, excellent to know, especially right now when we're in this drought situation. So, well, we were, hopefully it's over. <laughs> But I think it's going to be a while before that happens. Anyway, thank you. All right. Um, I can't see all of the council. Does anyone else from the council have any questions for Summer or Jack? All right. I'm not hearing anything. So thank you both for being here tonight. We appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure we'll hear more as things change. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. And just a, a quick uh, iteration again, um, it's actually January 4th uh, and we're trying to set the time for 1 p.m. on the Board of Supervisors agenda. So it's a set time so everybody can kind of plan for that. If anybody would like to call, call in and listen or make comments, that uh, that will be kind of a public listening session also for staff so that we can, and for the board so we can receive public comment on this. And then on the 25th is when it will be brought back to the board to consider for consideration for adoption and uh, feel free to join that as well both of those are tuesdays and if you have any questions in the meantime right, feel free you. to email or or call okay anything else from the council I don't see anyone with hands raised or anybody cutting in so all right good night you guys thank you thank you All right, our next item is oral comments from the public. This is a time when, I don't know what that was. Oral comments from the public, you can comment on anything that is not on the agenda or anything that's on the consent calendar at this time. Um, you have three minutes to uh, address the council. Would anybody from the public like to speak? Tom Ross is joining us. Just give him a minute to unmute. If anyone Tom, else would like to call, if you're in, on, if you're on your speak. phone, Tom, I'm sorry. You can try star six if you can hear me. He's still on here, but I mm -hmm. we've lost him here. I don't know how to move. Star six, Tom, did you hear Sienna? Okay, Sienna? can well, you I hear me now? There. Yes, yep. There we go, welcome. Okay, but now I can't hear you, but I'll go forward. Anyway, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I am here today before the council in relation to an email that I had sent to the city council members concerning some projects and about a natural gas shutoff leak at Royal Crest Mobile Home Park. I am requesting that my letter, December 2nd, 21, to the city council and the written response I received from city manager and councilman Losey be made part of the public record. I have sent the letters to, uh, to the city clerk. I have not received a response to my letter dated December 2nd from the city council. In the letter, I expressed concerns about the ADA parking at Ray's Food Place. The new parking has been moved further from the front door off to the side of the store with very poor lighting and visibility. The parking area is elevated with no railing or curbing. I feel this is unsafe for the intended user. I am concerned with the sidewalks and wheelchair ramps at the intersection of Redwood Way and Greenwood Way. The ramping does not meet ADA guidelines. The sidewalk has dropped off on both sides without railing and curbing. I also express concerns for the ADA parking at River Lodge. It has been moved further from the entrance with no lighting and no visibility. 
The week of November 9th, Railcrest Mobile Home Park was without natural gas for four nights. On Wednesday afternoon, I contacted uh, Mayor Long after the park was out for three days with my concern that the citizens of the park were facing their fourth night without heat, limited cooking, and no hot water. In response, I received from Councilman Losey asking why I am concerned with the park. I am concerned for my family members, my friends that live in the park. More importantly, are the citizens of the park with little income, no transportation, and no outside support. I'm gonna add just a quick paragraph that I forgot to include. I contacted Mayor Long January, 2020 about the wheelchair ramp at River Lodge. The lift has had numerous failures over the years. My first failure was in, I think 2018 or 2019. I've been in the lift twice and I've been stranded twice. I think the lift is rated for 600 pounds. Most adult wheelchairs weigh between 350 and 480 pounds. Mine is 430. When I pack on my needed supplies and myself, my chair is probably over uh, 650. So if this is the case, the ramp is woefully underpowered. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, for your comments. And um, just to make the public aware, we all received your letter with voicing your concerns. Thank you for that. Um, our city manager did respond to you on 1217, I believe. Um, as city council members, we are not engineers. We understand your concerns, but we do not go out and inspect actual projects because we don't have that expertise, but we did contact our city staff who does have that expertise to go and check it all out. And I do know the city manager sent us a copy of the letter that he sent out to you, um, taking item by item and explaining the city's stance or situation. So um, we appreciate you being here tonight. I just wanna let the public know that we did respond to your concerns. We didn't just leave you hanging. Can, and, can uh, you still hear me? You know, the Royal Crest. Can yeah. you still hear me or am I muted again? We, no, we can hear you. So thank you for your response, Mayor Long. For full transparency and disclosure, the city council should discuss my letter. And if the city manager is writing the letter on behalf of the city council, the city council needs to approve that letter and ask for it to be written. I have not received a response from the city council. The council needs to put this information before the public. I feel that I am forced to do this reading tonight because the council did not bring it before the public. Thank you. All right, I guess that's where we will just have to agree to disagree because I feel like the council did do their job. We hire our city manager and our city staff to take care of these issues as well as our city attorney. So did the I'm city sorry you council feel that way and authorize that, um, the city manager to write the letter. I discussed it with him, yes, and he said he would respond to all of your concerns. So the council did not did. authorize it. I, I, I think that could be a Brown Act violation. I think we need to move on. Thank you. So this isn't on our agenda. We can't discuss it much more than what we've already done. I understand. But if you want something added, you need to um, go through the proper channels and we would be glad to talk to you more. Thank you. Mayor Long, can and I as just far as the Royal Crest comment? out. Yeah, of course. I was just gonna point out that we sent several staff members Ma from police. Can you hear me, Mayor Long? I just point out that we sent several staff yeah, members I was to say volunteer. That. Okay, go ahead. I believe the several oh, staff members that were sent out was after I made several calls on Wednesday afternoon and brought in adult protective services. I don't think the city staff, according to the people in the park, I went and visited. The first person they saw 
was Mayor Long around five o'clock on Thursday afternoon. It was not five o'clock, but we don't gonna argue about that. All we can tell you is that we are not PG&E. There was not much we could do other than pressure PG&E until they actually gave the okay, turned the gas back on, and then city staff was on hand to help relight all those pilot lights and check on all of the people. So as Thank far you. as the city doing what they could do, I feel like we did what we could. If we could have done more, we certainly would have. I would like to request a copy of the city's policies and procedures in an emergency situation. And if I need to do that separately, I would be happy to. Merritt, do you want to respond to that one or just have him call City Hall? Yeah, if he contacts our office, he's sent us plenty of emails. Um, if he sends an email and requests a policy, he'd be happy to provide it. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Tom. All right, is there anyone else from the public that would like to speak to the City Council on anything that's not on our agenda? Walt, I see your hand is up. There must be a gadget on this computer to raise my hand, but I don't know where it is. That's okay, I saw your real hand, you're good. <laughs> All right. Good evening, Mayor Long, Council members. Merry Christmas. Um, I have a comment with regard to the earthquake today, actually. Um, Julie and I live at Royal Crest, who this previous gentleman seems to be awfully concerned about, even though he doesn't live here. Um, and we did have quite an earthquake today, as everybody in town knows. I would like to thank City Finance Director Aaron Filmley, City Manager Merritt Perry, and Fortuna Fire Chief Lon Will Winburn for their response today. I called um, Aaron to see if there was, I don't know, some, some way to, to check up on the elderly folks here at Royal Crest. There's about 205 homes here. And Aaron immediately contacted Merritt, obviously. Merritt immediately contacted um, Fire Chief Winburn, and I don't know, within a very few minutes, uh, Chief Winburn was here. Uh, he drove the park. He, uh, I, I guess he wanted to make sure that there wasn't, I don't know, gas leakage, whatever, from, from the earthquake, but that was a very instant, outstanding response. And we do thank them, all of them. Thank I you. Well, that, I guess that's all I have to say is thank you. All right, thank you for your comments, Walt. And we definitely do appreciate our volunteer fire department and all they do. So I'm glad they showed up for you and kind of cruised through and made sure everything was okay. So yeah. we'll, we will thank Lon personally when I see him as well. Any other comments from the public? Yana, has anyone called in? I don't see any hands raised on my end. Nope, there are none. Okay, we'll go ahead and close public comment and move on to our consent calendar. We do have 10 items tonight, including city council minutes and our monthly reports from administrative, community development, finance, parks and rec, police, public works, river lodge, a report of disbursements and approval of the employment agreement between the finance director and the city of Fortuna. Does anyone wish to pull any items? All right, hearing none, seeing none. Do we have a motion? I move to approve the consent calendar as printed. I will second. second. All right, we have two seconds. Pick one, Donna. <laughs> Got it. All right, roll call. Council Member Johnson. Yes. Council Member Losey. Yes. Council Member Stanfield. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Trent. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. Thank you. Um, we have two items for city council business. And first one is the second reading and adoption of ordinance 
50 amending the chapter 9.24 of the Fortuna Municipal Code to provide amended regulations for camping and related activity within the city. Staff report, please. Our city attorney Ryan Potts will be providing a staff report with some additional information. Yes, thank you. Uh, Ryan, if you're talking, we can't hear you. Ryan is remote too, so there may be some, some difficulty. <laughs> okay, we can see you now. I am going to call in. Um, I think the audio will be better that way. Okay, we'll give you a minute to do that. I'm going to let my little dog out because she's yipping. You guys probably heard her. I thought that was the second to my motion. She's a pest and she doesn't give up. She'll just keep doing it though. So. She's a pest and she doesn't give up. She'll just keep doing it though. She doesn't give up. She'll just keep doing it though. Okay, is that better? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'm just gonna turn off my video. I'm not sure the Wi-Fi here is very good too. Um, and so tonight um, we are here for the second reading of the city's uh, proposed new camping regulations. On December 6th, the council conducted its introduction and first reading, um, and tonight um, we'll be recommending that the council conduct a second reading and adopt the new regulations, which would become effective 30 days from tonight. Um, as you'll recall from December 6th, the reason for bringing to the council new camping regulations was the result of the Ninth Circuit decision in the Martin versus City of Boise case. That case found that the Eighth Amendment prohibited the imposition of criminal penalties for sitting, sleeping, or lying outside on public property. The court was careful in that decision to note the limitations of its holding. The court in particular said that it in no way dictates to the city that it must provide sufficient shelter for the homeless or allow anyone who wishes to sit, lie, or sleep on the street at any time or any place. The court also noted that its holding does not cover individuals who do have access to adequate temporary shelter, whether because they have the means to pay for it or because it is realistically available to them for free, but who choose not to use it. And the court finally noted that um, it does not hold that a jurisdiction with insufficient shelter space, such as the city of Fortuna, can never criminalize the act of sleeping outside. The court stated that even where shelter is unavailable, an ordinance prohibiting sitting, lying, or sleeping outside at particular times or in particular locations might well be constitutionally permissible. And it noted that an ordinance barring the obstruction of public rights of ways or the erection of certain structures was permissible. Now, our ordinance uh, before you tonight uh, draws an important distinction between camping on public property and sleeping on public property, providing different regulations for each. The first section prohibits camping as technically defined in the ordinance and the use of camping equipment on certain public property during certain times. For the purposes of this ordinance, the mere act of sleeping, lying, or sitting on public property is excluded from the definition of camping, and the use of blankets, sleeping bags, or bedrolls is excluded from the definition of camping equipment or camping paraphernalia. The first section prohibits camping, again, as technically defined in the ordinance, and the use of camping paraphernalia, also as defined, in public places, regardless of the time of the day, in the following locations. In all city parks, 
within 75 feet of officially designated trails on the River Lodge property, open space, residential zoning districts, neighborhood commercial districts, and retail commercial districts. The first section of the proposed ordinance also prohibits camping and the use of camping paraphernalia in all public places during the hours of 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. The second section deals with sitting, lying, or sleeping in public places. This second section prohibits the obstructing, obstruction of pedestrian or veh vehicular traffic by sitting, lying, or sleeping in a public place or in doorways or entrances or exits to buildings. This second section also prohibits sleeping only in a public place between the hours of 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. daily. It also prohibits sleeping only in a public place between the hours of 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. unless there are no sleeping spaces practically available in any shelter or if there does not exist any viable alternative to sleeping in a public place. And finally, the ordinance continues without substantive change, the city's existing regulations for camping on private property. And so that's a summary of what's before you tonight um, and what the council conducted, uh, introduced and conducted a first reading on, on December 6th. I would note that uh, the version before you tonight includes the council directed change prior to the introduction at last meeting um, in the uh, storage of personal property in public places section to indicate that um, the storing of personal property um, in public places is prohibited except as allowed by the code. Um, the previous version that was brought before you on December 6th stated except as provided by the city council. Um, and so I'm happy to stop there. Um, and Mayor Long, with your permission, I'd like to send it to Chief Day and I will stick around for any questions uh, that the council may have. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Chief. Good evening, Mayor Long, Honorable City Council. I just wanna talk for a few minutes about what the police department's direction is on the actual rollout of the program. So the rollout of the department's policy and procedure regarding enforcement activity will actually be finalized after the council adoption. Um, what we're looking at is the first 30 days after adoption uh, being uh, somewhat of a soft launch that focuses mostly on a campaign aimed at educating uh, those in need that are in the city of Fortuna. So the policy and procedures will also be developed and finalized to include education and enforcement options. So when we look at options, we're talking about, of course, previously stated education, providing information. Uh, and informative literature about available resources to those in need. Also, there's a collaborative uh, component of this um, with our partner organizations in order to better educate and assist those in need who will accept uh, assistance and resources uh, within the community. And um, when it comes to the enforcement aspect, the Fortuna Police Department will seek voluntary compliance prior to taking enforcement action. So in cases of habitual violations where essentially a resolution cannot be reached by persons refu either refusing assistance, um, e either refusing assistance or refusing to adhere to the municipal code as adopted, uh, we, we will proceed um, with some sort of warning citation either one or more times before we go to either an administrative or a criminal citation. Um, so essentially that's what our overarching view or vision is for the rollout. And then I'm available to answer any questions the council may have about program implementation or any misnomers that have been generated as, as a result of the uh, press and media. Thank you, Chief D. I'm gonna open public comment and uh, while we're taking questions from council. If anyone wants to call the number on your screen and join our conversation or make your comments or ask questions, please feel free to do so. If anyone that's in our meeting wants to um, comment, please raise your hand. If you don't know how to do that, wave at me like Walt does. Um, does anyone from the council have any questions? Mayor 
Mike Losey. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, just a, um, a verification. Um, so on on the nights that or or during the contacts with folks um, before there is um, a citation issued, criminal citations. Um, will your officers make some effort to determine whether there are um, beds available, for instance, in Eureka, say at the uh, homeless shelter? Yeah, that's a very good question, Council Member Losi. And we do have the ability to check with uh, both the men's and women's shelter in Eureka, as well as our CADA house to ascertain whether or not beds are available. And if I understand correctly, if there are beds available there, um, your officers would make the effort or, or offer to even transport somebody to one or uh, any of those shelters, correct? Yes, sir. So that would be, you know, our overarching goal would be to be able to provide that type of assistance. And so in the event that we do find um, those in the community that are open minded and seeking assistance, we really do try to facilitate that by making those phone, phone calls and or uh, even in, in past practice arranging transportation to those facilities. Okay, thank you. Anyone else from the council have any questions or comments? Anyone from the public have any questions or comments? I'm not seeing any hands raised on my end, Siana. Nobody there either? Okay. No. All right, well, if there are no more questions or comments, do we have a motion? I will make a motion to conduct the second reading and adopt ordinance 2021-750 and read by title only. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second, Siana. Ordinance 2021-750, an ordinance of the city council of the city of Fortuna, amending chapter 9.24 to title nine of the Fortuna Municipal Code to provide for regulations governing camping and related activities within the city of Fortuna. Council member Johnson? Yes. Council member Losey? Yes. Council member Stanfield? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Trent? Yes. Mayor Long? Yes. All right, thank you. Our next item is a supplemental budget request to use American Rescue Plan Act ARPA funds for the server upgrades necessary, necessary to implement the Parks and Recreation Tyler Technologies software. Staff report. Please. And our finance director, uh, Aaron Foundley, is going to be presenting this. Cameron Moll is on vacation, and Aaron has agreed to run through this and work with Cameron on the staff report. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Yes. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and City Council. So. Uh, we have gone through the American Rescue Plan Act a number of times. I'm just going to quickly highlight some of the, the uh, main points um, in case any members of the public did not attend those previous meetings. So on March 11th, 2021, President Biden signed the $1.9 trillion ARPA uh, American Rescue Plan Act to speed up the country's recovery from the economic and health effects of COVID-19. Um, there were five allowable uses listed as part of the interim final rules. And those five were to support public health expenditures, to address negative economic impacts caused by the public health emergency, to replace lost public sector revenue, to provide premium pay for essential workers, and to invest in water, sewer, and broadband infrastructure. So the city is expected to receive a little bit more than $2.9 million in two equal tranches, one which was received in July of 2021, and a second that is coming this July, 2022. Uh, to date, um, $2,465,000 has been added into the budget uh, for American Rescue Plan Act uses, including uh, premium pay for essential workers, police department facility remodel project, revenue recovery for police officer base pay, and upgrades uh, of the city council chambers audiovisual equipment. Um, so that leaves $467,000 uh, 
uh, left to be allocated from our American Rescue Plan Act funds. Uh, as has been discussed in previous council meetings, uh, some of those remaining funds were reserved for future uses, such as uh, fiscal year 22-23 revenue recovery, police department facility contingency, economic development, et cetera. So staff is requesting that the council approve the use of $25,000 for server upgrades necessary to complete the implementation of the Parks and Rec uh, software. $25,000 was included in the fiscal year 21-22 budget um, for this Tyler Tech software. So that uh, this 25,000 is just for the server upgrades. And this software will allow for improved citizen access through an online portal where members of the public uh, will be able to make reservations, uh, make payments, get details about pricing and uh, uh, availability. And the software will also reduce manual processes, uh, large cash deposits, and data entry and streamline finance, uh, department finances. Um, so if approved, city staff will be ready to move forward uh, with the software impl implementation next month uh, with the targeted go live date of around June 2022. Um, and so uh, at this time, staff recommendation is to approve a supplemental budget request to use American Rescue Plan Act funds for the server upgrades necessary to implement the Parks and Recreation Tyler Technology software in the amount of $25,000. And I'd be happy to answer any questions the council may have. Thank you, Aaron. And um, we'll open public comment. Does anyone from the council have any questions or anyone from the public that is on our call? Um, I have a question, Aaron. Does Tyler, I lost the name of it. Tyler Technologies, is that just something new to the city or is it an upgrade? This is going to be a completely new uh, module for the Parks and Recreation Department. So currently everything runs through you know, just Excel files or internal kind of documents. And so this will really allow uh, that department to put everything online, to have their own dedicated website for Parks and Recreation programs, for uh, rentals. All those things will now, instead of the person having to come into the office to make payments, they'll be able to just hop online, make the payment directly through there. And so they won't have to wait uh, for whenever the Parks and Rec office is open in order to make payments or make reservations or do any of those uh, typical tasks. They can just jump online whenever. And so there'll, there'll be a lot of improvements on when um, members of the public can, can get on and perform those tasks. So and is this if I could just add to that, Aaron Long. It, there's going to be a lot more functionality than just scheduling or reservations. People will be able to sign up for teams, at, order extra uniforms. We're going to try to put everything on there that we can. So most of the interface and, and change of funds can be on this platform. So is this a one-time expense or are we going to have an annual payment that we have to make or this, how? Yeah, this is a one-time expense and this is really just accelerating something that the city was going to have to do at some point. These servers uh, that we're recommending re being replaced are also part of our mail servers, I believe, is what Nilek said. And so those were coming towards the end of their life. So we were going to have to replace those servers at some point in the near future. So we're just doing a little bit ahead of schedule so we can um, make sure that it's all compatible with the new Parks and Rec software. Okay, thank you. Mike Hosey? Just a quick question. Do we know what uh, uh, estimated cost to maintain the Tyler technology software is going to be, or would that be handled in house? Um, I could certainly look it up. Um, I know it was included in our budget this last year. And let me see if I can find it real quick for you. All right, are there any more questions or comments from council or any members of the public? I am seeing none. We'll close public comment. Does someone want to make a motion? Let's let him see if he can find that answer. It's not critical. Oh, I'm so, but... I just let my dog back in. I didn't hear what you asked him. I'm sorry. Oh, he's, he's looking up a. <laughs> An answer to a question that I had. Okay. 
Okay, I found it. So it looks like the recurring fees will be about $1,800 a year. And again, that was included in, in last year's budget and will continue to include it in, in future budgets. Okay, and, and so that's Tyler, Tyler Technologies that will be doing the maintaining? That's okay. correct, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, does anyone else from the council have any questions or anyone from the public have any questions or comments? Seeing and hearing none, we will close public comment. And now we're ready for a motion. Okay, guys, where's all my peeps? Do I have to make it again? <laughs> yes, someone does. We're going to be here. I will move to approve an SBR um, supplemental budget request to use American Rescue Plan Act funds for the server upgrades necessary to implement the Parks and Recreation Tyler Technology software in the amount of $25,000. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second, Siona. Council Member Johnson. Sorry. Council Member Johnson. Yes. Thank you, Council Member Losi. <laughs> yes. Council Member Stanfield. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Trent. Yes. Mayor Long. Yes. All right. Thank you. Moving on to our city manager's report. Mayor. Thank you, Mayor Long. I'd like to review the upcoming meeting dates. Our next council meeting will be on Monday, January 3rd at 6 o'clock p.m. Our next planning commission meeting will be on Tuesday, December 28th at 6 o'clock p.m. And then our next measure E meeting will be on January 19th at 5.30 p.m. The December 21st meeting of the measure E committee was canceled because we had a, held a special meeting in late November. The next Roner Community Recreation Park District meeting is on January 5th at 2.30 p.m. Just a few items to report the earthquake. Um, it, it resulted in a lot of requests for information. There's a lot of folks concerned and then a lot of people providing information. So we did provide photos and updates to the press, but um, we had a good response from the city, the police, building officials, um, and other city staff, including um, engineer, general services, superintendent, water and sewer, superintendent, and utility crew. They all went out and inspected city facilities, and um, gratefully, there was not a lot of damage. A lot of things flew off shelves, and there was a, and um, we only had, we had two water leaks that we think were a result of the earthquake. But otherwise, the city fared and its facilities fared pretty well. Our building official and police did walk around town and visit many businesses that had damage and items that flew off the shelves. And so there was quite a bit of damage and several of our businesses had to close down for cleanup and then were able to subsequently reopen. So there were um, pretty significant losses. It sounds like mostly on merchandise and then also windows breaking on storefronts. So I was pleased that we were able to offer some assistance. Our building official also went over and assisted and took a look at the vets hall. There were some concerns about potential for damage there too. So. I was pleased with the response um, from the city and, and glad that nobody was injured. Next item I have is that I just want to let council know that the city is very close to closing escrow on the eight acres adjacent to Newburgh Park. We just got a estimate of closing cost tonight. I'll be putting in the check request for the remaining funds and the grant application, which is really more procedurally under the, under the Prop 68 per grant app per capita program was submitted last week. So we're close to securing that purchase and being able to look at the future of that parcel for the addition of the Newburgh Park. And I will say I continue to work with FBID um, on the hiring of an executive director and, and revising their contract with the city and updates to the municipal code. So that's, that's an ongoing project and we expect to bring that back to the council in the new year. But I'm very pleased with the volunteers that we have on their board and the, the positive direction that they want to go. So I'm appreciating the efforts that they're making really to, to, to do good things for our businesses in the city. And then lastly, City Hall will be closed on December 24th and December 31st in observance of the Christmas and New Year's holiday. So I just wanted to let everybody know that they they won't be able to come in and uh, do business with the city on those days. And that's all I have for my report. All right. Thank you, Merritt. Anyone have questions for Merritt? 
All right, seeing none, anyone have future agenda items that we haven't already talked about before? Hearing and seeing nobody raising hands, we'll move on to our council member reports. Cammy, you always have to go last, so you go first tonight. Okay, I'll make this simple. I have nothing to report. Oh, geez. <laughs> Change it up so you don't have to be last and everyone says everything. <laughs> okay, Jeremy. You're throwing me off my game here, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to, um, well, Merritt already spoke about um, FBID. So um, I just wanna wish everybody a Merry Christmas. I have nothing else to report. Thank you, Jeremy, Mike Losey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I did have a Redwood Coast Energy Authority meeting on the 16th of this month, and we heard a report on the um, a new group. It's called Core Hub, and they're put together to explore how we can move forward with climate resilience to reduce gas house emissions. It's a brand new uh, uh, group, and so I'm sure we'll be hearing more from them in the in the future and I'll report back. Um, so when I understand a little bit more about what they're going to be doing and recommending. We had a discussion on the community advisory committee and projects for them for the upcoming 2022 year. And then we had a closed session for, for an employee evaluation. Um, because of the earthquake that we experienced today, I just want to put out a reminder that people, now's the time to, to start thinking about safety equipment that you might want to have, whether it's in a go bag or someplace in your house that's accessible, including flashlights, medical kits, extra water and food. And uh, be sure and check your gas and water outlets after uh, the kind of shaker that we had today. And if you're out of town, be sure to have somebody that's local that has uh, access to the house to be able to go in and make sure that your water and gas outlets are not leaking and can or can be shut off. Other than that, I hope everybody have has a great Merry Christmas and a great New Year. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Mike Johnson. Okay, am I unmuted? You are. All right. <laughs> it's the first time for everything. I just wanted to uh, say we did not have a HCOG meeting in December. Looking forward to the one on January 20th, uh, as well as having a uh, humble just uh, the for historical commission meeting in January. I echo Mike's uh, comments about having a uh, preparedness kit and having someone be able to have access to your house to check things out since we're out of town i was able to get my daughter to make a pass through the house and make sure everything was okay and it was able to set our minds at ease and that was a, a good thing and other than that i have nothing else to report and i just wish everyone a merry christmas and a happy new year thank you all right thank you mike um I was honored to participate in helping make a city float for the electric Al Gray lighted parade, which was really fun. Siona always is energetic and has great ideas. And she um, coerces everyone into uh, going out and, take, and doing this. And it's, it's really fun. And so um, spent a few evenings down there. Mike Losey joined us one evening. Katie from planning department joined us. I'm not sure who else, but um, people donated lights. and. It's just always a fun time. And then we rode on the float, which was really, really cold, but it was still fun. And we ended up with another trophy. So thank you, Sianna. And a huge shout out to Eric Thompson, um, FBID board president for the past 10 years who um, headed up that whole, organized the whole thing. She didn't have a lot of back info to work from and she kind of just took it and uh, ran with it and we had 29 entries so I thought that was quite successful and just a huge thank you to Erica for making sure that our Fortuna event happened. Um, 
I was invited to talk at the Conservation Corps award ceremony and was able to thank them for all they do for our city. Um, they were getting presented their stockings that the chamber coordinates by taking donations from businesses in Fortuna and making over 100 stockings for the core members. And um, it's just always fun to see a whole bunch of young people giving back and, you know, they help set up events, they clean up, they weed, they take out invasive species everywhere, they fight fires. They are just out and about doing all kinds of things and they're just a really hard working group. So it was nice to just be able to stop by and say hello and thank you to them. Um, we did have a redeck executive meeting where we approved some more loans and kept a um, couple businesses that were just kind of needing a bridge loan to make some really exciting things happen in um, the county. And so it's one of my favorite boards. We will have another executive meeting in January. We Our regular council meetings can't, or redeck meeting is canceled because lack of quorum for Christmas time. And with that, I too would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Um, we do have closed session tonight. So we have conference with labor negotiators, city negotiators, city manager, Merritt Perry, employee organizations or the Fortuna Police Employees Association and the Fortuna Employees Association and the unrepresented slash management group in accordance with section 54957.6 of the government code. So if no one has any comments or questions regarding closed session, we need a motion to adjourn to closed session. I'll make a motion to adjourn to closed session. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second to adjourn to closed session. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank all of you who joined us tonight. We appreciate it and look forward to someday meeting in person. I don't know when that is. <laughs>